Hi everyone and welcome back to our quest system series in UE4. In the last episode we worked out how to add our objectives to our quest logs. So when I interact with this NPC it shows the quest, uh, quest log uh, quest, sorry, description with objectives nice and clearly for me to see. And I can reject this to close it. My task now is to make it so that when I accept the quest it will add this to my quest log which we created previously. So that's what we're going to be doing in this episode. So for this to work, we need to start working on our quest log component. So in my quest system folder, I'm going to make a new blueprint class and I'm going to choose my actor component. And I'm going to call this one quest log. Now an actor component is something that you plug onto other actors and it can have its own variables, its own functions. And that's what we want with our quest log. We want to store loads of data and have different functions to do stuff with those events, uh, with those uh, quests, sorry. And it's useful to have a component because it allows you to then add it to not just the player, but also other players uh, that may be in your world. And that means when you interact with them, you can actually see their quests and get access to their quest data too. So you can see if you're sharing the same quest and so on and so forth. So it's quite useful to have it uh, compartmentalized uh, in a component. So... On our quest log, we're going to make a couple of variables. So the first variable is going to be quests, plural. And the variable type for that is going to be the quest parent that we set up previously. Choose that. And we want to change this to make it an array because this is going to be a list of all the quests that we have in our quest log. So make it an array. An array is a, is a list, basically. Add another variable. And this one's going to be called active quest and this will be the quest that you currently have active and showing uh, like way, uh, waypoints for or displaying the objective on the main screen so this is again a quest type but won't be a, an array it'll be just a single variable and we're going to click compile and that's it so this is going to have one function for now we're going to add and if you go to the functions on the left hand side we can add a function to our component and the name of this function is going to be add quest to log. And this function is going to take one input. So on the right hand side you'll see inputs, outputs, one input. And that input will be quest. And that will be the quest that we're going to add to our log. So it will be a quest type. And there you go. So to get this to add to this array, it's quite easy. All we have to do is drag out the quests array, choose get. So now we've got access to that list and we're going to do add unique. This add unique, not just add, what add unique does, it basically will add a, uh, a value to this array only if it's a unique value. So we won't get duplicates, which is what we want. So drag your quest input into the add unique like so and click compile and that's it for now for this one anyway close this and we now need to add our quest log to our player character so let's find our player character and I'm going to go to add component and type in the quest log component I now I have access to a quest log on my character click compile and we can close this going back to my quest system folder so this has now got a quest log and we can add quests to it using that function. The next job is to tie that uh, accept button on the quest dialog to adding a quest to our quest log. So let's go into our quest UI and open up the quest UI widget. Now on this widget we have a reject button which really, we've already co uh, programmed to close the window. Now we just need an accept to uh, not just add it to the quest log but also close the window too so click on your button one widget and scroll down the right hand side and you'll see on clicked click a little plus next to it and you get the event spawned so with this we're going to add the quest to our quest log but first we have to get access to that quest log now the quest log is belonging already to the player character we've just done that so let's get the player character which will simply return the pawn that's being controlled by the player 
and return value for this will then be cast to a third person character this is so we can access all the components and variables that belong to the third person character uh, actor so coming off as third person character we can access the quest log and you see get quest log now we've got the quest log we can now add to quest log add quest to log and the quest we're going to add to this uh, log is already stored as a variable on our quest UI so we just drag that in and drop it onto the quest input let's move that down there make it nice and tidy so all that's left is now to return and close this um, window back to the game so I'm just going to copy and paste what we had from the other button down to here as well like so okay so I click compile and let's just test that so we go up to the, the uh, NPC and click accept it closes the window but at the moment we can't see the quest log uh, on the user interface because we haven't tied any data to this actual widget it's just an empty widget it doesn't really do anything so we need to now tie that quest log component to this quest log UI so the quest log UI when we open it up we had two spaces for side quests and story quests these are scroll boxes which allows us to scroll down and see what quests we have assigned uh, to the player so story quests I've named story quests and you'll make is variable and for the bottom one I'm going to name that one side quests and again is variable now you want to choose is variable because that allows you to go to the graph editor and access these different boxes so you can add stuff to them so the first thing we do with the quest log UI is get access to that quest log data so on construct event is here where we're going to first of all start off by getting that quest log data so again we're going to get the player character because it belongs to the, uh, the player character and then from there we can cast to third person character and from the third, third person character get quest log now it's advised that from here we can now promote this to a variable this makes it a lot easier later on when we want to reference that quest log. So if us doing all this again, we can just use this reference. So I'm going to name my uh, variable quest log. Like so. I can, as you can see, it appears in the variable list, so I can drag it out whenever I like. So now we have the quest log data. The next job is to get the list of quests from the quest log and display them in this field. So for that to work though, we're going to have to create a widget for our various text fields so we can have multiple of them appearing. So that's what we're going to do now. And in my widget folder here, I'm going to go to user interface and add a new widget. And this is going to be quest log entry score UI. Open this up. And in this chap here, I'm going to get rid of the canvas panel. And I'm going to use a size box instead. If you're, never, if you're not using absolute positioning, you don't want the canvas panel. So I'm going to use a size box. I'm going to override the height and dedicate, uh, dictate it to be 40 high. But I'm not going to change its width because I want its width just to fill the whole entire uh, width of its uh, parent. Inside this size box, I'm going to have a button. And this button is going to have some text on it. So the button, I'm going to change it actually now to desired so I can see what I'm dealing with here. Uh, the button itself, I've got as filling horizontally and vertically. And I'm just going to change the color of it a little bit. So in the style section of the appearance tab, we can change the, the appearance of our button. So when it's normal, I can make it, I can choose how it uh, is drawn. So the tint here, I can change to be whatever color I like but I'm going to keep it uh, a grey sort of color and I'm just going to make it darker like so and 
when it's hovered we're going to actually we're going to use the dropper here actually we'll use this it's a lot quicker and a lot easier but as I say you can do, you guys can do whatever you want like so like so <clears throat> so we're just going to do this pretty simple bare bones for now uh, we're going to come back in here later in a later episode to make it all jazzy and uh, looking pretty but for now that will do just fine I'm going to click compile oh hang on let's go to our text yes let's make our text left aligned like so click compile and on here we're now going to give some data to it and the only data this thing needs is a quest that it's going to show so I'll call it a new variable called quest and it's going to be a type of quest and click compile now for this quest here I want to be able to change it as soon as I create this uh, widget elsewhere so for that I need to create an instant editable so it can be edited outside and expose on spawn so it will be edited as soon as created click compile and go back to your designer click on the text block and in the content side on the right hand side you'll see bind next to the text field click on this and you can see quest now appears we're going to choose the name and click compile close that now we don't need that and we go back to our quest log user interface so on this widget we're going to tell it now to fill these boxes with that widget we just made so on our quest log we can get quests which is a list of the quests and from here we can do a for each loop we should cycle through each one of the quests and for each one of the quests for now i'm just going to put all in story quests we'll do uh, the separation in a minute between story and side and the story quests i'm going to add to this field so let's go from the loop body and create that widget we just made create widget and when we choose our widget quest log entry ui you can see the quest variable appear because we exposed it on spawn connect us up to the array element and next job is now to add this to that story quests panel add child will do that for us so adding a child content to the story quest panel and it'll ask for some content which will be just the return value from our quest ent uh, log entry ui and click compile and that'll do for now so let's go back to play click on our dude accept go into our quests and you can see the quest humble beginnings has appeared in their quest log Whee. that's what we want so how to separate things into different categories between quest uh, side quests and story quests well for that we need go on our quests and on our quest parent i'm going to add a variable to it go is st oh, story quest and this will be a boolean now if you've got multiple types and rather than just two i would recommend using a numerator rather than a boolean so in this case though i only have a story or side so i'm just going to do a boolean to save some time so i'm going to click compile and i've now got a boolean and by default i'll make it a story quest and click compile so our quest 001 you can see here is story quest is true so this will appear in the right place already but now we need to program it so it will put it in the bottom panel if it is not a story quest so let's go back to our quest log ui and from our quest from the array element we can get from there get is story quest and this can go into a branch i'm going to put the branch at the end after we create the widget because all i'm doing is changing where it's going to be going so if it is a story quest it's going to go into the story quest panel as such now i'm going to add another add child and the return value for my widget will be the content still but the target will be the side quests panel 
click compile and then we're going to go into our quests and we can make quests 001 and a side quest by ticking off is story quest so make sure it's not on click compile when we play and interact with our NPC this time and accept it will now appear in the side quest panel which is what we want so it doesn't look too jazzy at the moment we're going to jazz it up at a later date it's not an issue in the next episode we're going to make it so you can change the active quest you currently have and make the quest log also show on the right hand side their details of the quest such as the quest description and objectives if you've enjoyed this video and uh, you like what I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon, just like these people have, and get access to the next part of this series right now, plus many other videos exclusive to my Patreon subscribers. Big thank you to everyone that's been supporting me thus far, and uh, yeah, if you have any comments or questions or anything you'd like to see added to this series, or any other videos you want me to try and do, uh, please leave a comment below, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.